at a premium. Okay, hello everybody. Um, so, can I get an indication of, firstly, who was here last time when Chris gave his, his spiel about stroke dash array? Who was here last time? Nobody? Uh, one month ago. Last month? Nobody? Is it a completely new crowd? <laughs> Isn't that fantastic? <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> well, I was here last time. <laughs> Oh, that's good then. So none of you actually heard his thing except just one or two. Since no one was here, it was awesome. <laughs> oh, it was fantastic. It got me back again, that's for sure. Uh, and I'll be talking tonight about uh, SVG animations. Um, so can I just have a show of hands? Who has done much with SVG? Okay. That's just to give me an idea of whether I'm talking blah, blah, blah over or not. Um, yeah, okay. Great. Uh, and who has done anything with stroke dash array in CSS? One or two? I know he has. <laughs> that was his talk. And anyone done anything with stroke dash offset? Okay, great. So everybody's going to hear something new. All right, so I started with an animation, of course, but um, it's just an animated GIF. It doesn't really count. Uh, I just wanted an animation there, and I can't put anything else using uh, Google Slides. So here we go. All right, so my problem was uh, slow SVG animation. So uh, I use SVG a lot on my site and I do lots of animations and uh, what was there was pathetic. Um, I was using mini line segments and I'll talk about what that, that means in a minute. And then I'll basically, I'll just go through the history of what I discovered and, and so on. I don't claim to be an expert by any means in all of this stuff, but I'll just help you help you to see what I discovered and hopefully it's useful to you. Um, I'll talk about Chrome audits a bit. I'll talk about stroke dash array, um, stroke dash offset, uh, what I call pure CSS, sticking to a small animation area and invoking hardware acceleration if you can. Now if all that is blah, 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 hopefully it'll make some sort of sense by the end of tonight. Okay, so my animations are actually, uh, I, I, I'm a mathematics educator from way back and uh, I do a lot of stuff with uh, animating various mathematical concepts and so on. Um, and I, use, I used to use this library called JSX Graph, uh, which will actually output SVG math graphs. One of the things with, uh, with SVG is that you just get, if your thing is 500 pixel wide and 400 pixel high, for example, then the top left corner is 0, 0, and the bottom right corner is 500, 400, whatever I said. And, but that's not the way mathematics works. Of course, we're used to a x, y axis, and 0, 0 is in the middle, and x's go that way, and y's go positively that way. But of course, in SVG, it's y's go positively that way. It's all over the place. So this library came along, and I thought, oh, great. That, that saves me a lot of messing around, uh, hand coding some of this stuff. So I started to use it. Anyone heard of this? I don't expect you would, but one has. Why? Why not? <laughs> well, good. <laughs> don't use it. It's terrible. And I'll explain why in a minute. Okay. So let's go and have a look at some of these animations and see what the, what the issue is. Now, this is, uh, this is the kind of thing. Some of you, this might be the first time you've ever seen something like this, but did you ever know that a sine curve is created like this? Whoa. Now, it's deathly slow. I, I created this and I thought, oh, yeah, okay, the, the, the circle goes around and the, and the radius thing goes around and I'm creating my circle and it's all wonderful. But the thing that you need to have a look at in all of these things is the frame rate that I'm getting, which is pathetic. It's, it's under 20 frames uh, per second and it's just pretty awful. With this, you can do things like explain what a amplitude is like this and so that's what it does but it was so pathetically slow I thought I can't put that up I've got to do something with it so I I contacted the people who make this JSS graph and I said look this is really pathetically slow what can I actually do to make it better and so one of their suggestions was um, to use a data array and what's going on with that is in the first one that I showed you to, I'll go back to that, 
first one that I showed you actually is creating the curve by doing a, a very small line segment. So it's going small one, small one, small one, small one, small one, and creating it as it, as it goes around. Um, if you actually look at this closely, it actually gets even slower towards the end of its travel because by the end of its travel, it's got a lot of work to do. It needs to create the whole curve up until that point, and then it has to draw, draw the thing on the, on the screen, it has to rotate things around and whatever. So it's got so much to do, it's... Sorry? Yes, yes. This is, as I said, this is my story of discovery. I, it worked and I thought, okay, great, look at that, it works. But it was so slow, it was just, it was just uh, uh, awful. So uh, instead of creating, because uh, what it's doing is just creating up to that part in the sine curve at every frame. So it needs to, it needs to um, calculate and then decide how much to do and do all the little segments dit, 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 around and put them all on the screen and then do all that in a 60th of a second and go to the next one and do it all again. And of course by the end of the travel each time it's really got an awful lot to do. Anyway, these guys said why don't you um, create the curve once and that is uh, create the whole curve as a series of data points and then um, just take, like take one extra um, item of the array as you go around. It's still taking one extra item, but it's not having to do all the calculation each time. So as you'll notice, that and plus a bunch of other things. One other thing, uh, my first one uses jQuery. Uh, they said, look, stop using jQuery, and I, I did, and I've actually never used jQuery since. And if you're, st <laughs> if you're still using it, uh, if you really want to make life a lot quicker for yourself, uh, I suggest you actually get rid of it. Um, a lot of these libraries do a whole lot of stuff uh, for you that you don't necessarily want or need, and uh, certainly things speeded up when I got rid of jQuery. But anyway, so with the data thing, do you know what I mean by the data thing? Does that make sense? Um, instead of it creating the whole curve every time, it's just creating the curve once as a data set, and then just grabbing from that, that uh, array uh, for each of the points. So, whoa, is that beautiful or what? So I was very excited at that point. I thought, oh good, this is, this is actually quite acceptable. As you can see, I'm getting 60 frames a second. This isn't, this isn't the most accurate of frame rate thingies, but it, it's clearly giving me very close to 60, 60 frames. And I thought, yeah, this is actually, I can, I can live with this. This is actually pretty good. And trying to be a good developer, we all know that we need to test on a million different things. So I thought, all right, let's, let's just go and see what that actually looks like on, on an iPad. On an iPad. <laughs> <laughs> and my friend's system here does not behave nicely with all this. No, no iPad. Oh, never mind. Anyway, you get, it looks like that first one, basically. Even though on a desktop it's looking fine, but on my iPad it's giving me... It's giving me... Um, I mean, it, it's, it's like watching grass grow. I mean, it's just pathetic. So it's giving me, at the moment, it's giving me 0.2 frames per second. Ah, now it's giving me one, uh, 2.6. How exciting. It's up to 5.6. It's up to 10. So it's just, it's incredibly slow. And uh, so, I, okay, I got depressed again. I thought I, thought I had it licked, but uh, it was still uh, quite bad. So, all right, we'll go back to this. So many devices. All right, and I thought, well, there, there must be a better way to do this. So, uh, before, I, before I show you the next bit, um, what, one of the things that I did get into then was having a look at some of Chrome development tools and seeing what it can actually tell me about what's going on with this particular library. So let me just pull it up and uh, there's actually so much stuff in here. You can actually spend half a lifetime just figuring out what's here and figuring out how to interpret what's here and how to make the most of it. But I found this fantastic. I thought this was actually all really good. So I'm going to start this thing off and I'm going to click the record button and just let it record a bit for a few seconds and then stop the recording and stop that. 
I'm very conscious to turn everything off because everything I'm doing here chews up a lot of memory and I'm just a bit worried. Now, what you're looking at is disgusting. This is exactly what you don't want to see. So what it's actually done is it's done a profile of that six or seven seconds or so that I just recorded. And all of this stuff that's in here, which I'm going to zoom in on now, and go down here and show you some stuff. There you go. Now, all of these colours and all these wonderful things that are actually going on are processes that are going on in every frame. So, um, uh, all of these things are things like uh, timer feed, function call, um, draw, move to, update and so on. When I actually look really closely at each frame, it was just so ridiculously busy. Um, function call, draw, move to, update, remove to. This one says remove, remove to, insert later. I thought, my God. <laughs> I mean, that's fine if it's just one user interaction and you've got a couple of seconds and it doesn't really matter much. But if you're trying to keep things going at 60 frames per second, you cannot pull a thing out of the, out of the DOM and just have it sit there and taking up memory and so on. The other thing I want to point out here is, is these, these lines underneath here are indicating the, um, the, the JavaScript memory, I mean, the memory use and... and also, you can see down here the, uh, the GPU use and so on. So in all of this, it's just, in every second of this, it's just churning up so many cycles in, of everything. And then it does a, a garbage dump, chucks it all out, and then it builds all up again and chucks again. It's so busy. There's just so much going on here. It's ridiculous. And I thought, you know, I really don't like this framework anymore. There's so many things. I mean, I thought I'll try and beat this and try and sort of simplify things and cut out some of the, the steps and try and work around it. And I thought, meh, forget that. I, I just don't think I can do it. So <laughs> another library, chuck it out. And uh, what I did was I discovered a much simpler library that was a bit old and I updated it. And I now use it exclusively because it's nice and simple and I'll show you in a minute. Okay, so I just want to go back to that using mini line segments that I was talking about before um, and show you a couple of the other things that you can do in that in that uh, uh, the Chrome, Chrome development tools and so on. So I'll just show it to you simply here first. So uh, spread right out, this is what I was talking about before. Each frame is drawing another segment and what I was drawing was a 60th as much of course so it just go ching, 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 and would look nice and smooth as it went around. So what I'm going to show here is some of the cool things that you can do uh, in here. And I'll go to <coughs> rendering. Now, paint flashing is fantastic. I like this. So one of the things that I learnt was if your whole picture needs to be redrawn at every step, then that wastes a lot of... Uh, cycle time uh, in your animation. So what's really nice about this is that the only part that's being redrawn is the part that's flashing in green. So this is actually a really good thing. Here I'm using my own library. It's nice and simple. I don't have all that other junk stuff that's going on. Uh, and it's, it's nice and simple. Unfortunately, my final, my final version that I'm going to show you later still has the whole thing paint flashing. What, you find when, what I found doing this was that I'd fix one thing, go and build some other things in there, and then I'd find it, it sort of messed up something else that I'd, I'd tried to optimise before. So there's still things that you can do, but you also need to sleep occasionally too. So there you go. The other thing that you've got is a frame per second metre. And what you'll notice with this is it's giving me um, mostly close to 60 frames per second, but it's dropping down. Every, every second there it's having to do something and it's quite busy where it's doing it. So it's dropping right down uh, and it's not actually that smooth when you have a look at it. And if I was to speed that up 60 times, then uh, you're going to see quite a lot of drops there as, as well as you'll see in a minute. Um, one good bit of advice that I, I read recently is create things super, super slow 
and make sure they're really, really smooth. Then speed them up a bit and speed them up a bit more. I, I didn't do that when I first started developing. I just threw it all in and hoped for the best and it wasn't the best way to go at all. Um, okay, so uh, oh, perhaps what I'll do while I'm here, I'll just I'll do one of these recordings again for you and show you the difference. Now what you'll notice is that the animation is doing strange things. It's going faster and it's also not as smooth as it was before. I'll just stop there. One thing that I did learn about Google's developer tools, these, these various rendering things and so on, is that, of course, they take up a whole lot of memory. They, they churn up a heap of cycles. And so don't get depressed if you go and measure something and then it seems like your frame rates drop right down. A big part of it is just because um, the recording process and the, the various things that it's got to do slow things down a lot. So if you haven't seen these things before, I, I think this is great. It actually gives you a, uh, a screenshot of each step. Um, you'll notice that this is all a hell of a lot more simple. Um, each step has got very, very little going on. Why? Because I made it so. <laughs> and so in one second you've only got, all I'm doing is I'm firing the timer, um, I'm doing a function call, uh, I'm doing my animation um, function, I draw the path, I set an attribute, and then here's where it's actually painting the thing, and then it can just sleep for the rest of the second. It's got nothing else to do. So it's not doing all this junk stuff in the, in the background. Um, so yeah, when I saw this, I thought, ah, oh, so much cleaner and so much nicer to actually do. All right, so, um, so as a bit of a summary there, uh, I found that calculation, of course, is pretty quick in JavaScript, especially Chrome. Uh, the other thing is, you shouldn't develop on Chrome. You should develop on IE or something else crappy like that. And then if you can get it reasonably good in IE, then it's going to be fantastic in Chrome. <laughs> I make the mistake of doing things in Chrome because I don't really like to use anything else much. But um, yeah. Anyway, so uh, the drawing part is slow. So if you can reduce the amount of drawing that's involved, then that can actually be good. Um, but of course, if you try and calculate and draw, then it's deathly slow. And that was my big problem when I first started. Um, so what I tried to do was try to do it so that I'm not calculating and drawing uh, at the same time. Try and reduce that as much as possible. So I've shown you some of the Chrome audit stuff. I've said use simple libraries or none at all. Um, and now we'll talk about the stroke dash array and the stroke dash offset stuff. So I'll go to my uh, W3 schools, which I don't use very much, but for this, this is what I wanted to do. <coughs> um, okay, so what's going on here is I've got a, uh, this is an F SVG, it's, it's 500 pixels wide. I've drawn two lines here. One is grey to a sort of a, um, a comparison line, if you like, and the green one is the one that I'm going to do most things with. And uh, we'll go through what this stroke dash array actually is. You've probably actually played with it but forgot what it was called or something or other. So what stroke dash array does is gives you uh, this kind of thing. So if I go 50 and say 100, what that's going to do is it's going to draw for 50 pixels, have a rest for 100, draw for another 50, have a rest for another 100. So here it is, drawing for 50, rest for 100, draw for 50, rest for 100, and so on. Um, you can have as many numbers in there as you like. So if I do something like 10 and 20 and 40 or something or other, then we get Morse code. I actually tried to do Morse code um, SMS for tonight, but it just got too fiddly. <laughs> so I gave up, sorry. <laughs> it was about that many numbers, and I thought, oh, this is ridiculous. So I, I, I gave up. OK, so um, what, I'm gonna, uh, what I want to point out is that if I, the first one I showed you was 50-50, which was 50 on, 50 off, 50 on, 50 off. But actually, I don't need to do that. If I just do 50, 
it has the same effect. So 50 means 50 on, 50 off, 50 on, 50 off, uh, like that, uh, and so on. Um, okay. Who can tell me what, what will it be if I do 500? Remembering the whole thing is 500 wide, what will it look like if I say 500? Sorry, bad shot. <laughs> Why we have Beijing to throw the chocolates. Yes, okay, would you like to come and be a chocolate thrower? <laughs> okay, you are correct, it will just be a whole, a whole uh, straight line. What if I put zero? <laughs> Got caught in me pants. <laughs> Sorry. Why? Some people said zero. You say straight line. Why? Because you haven't set. Be brave. Come on. <laughs> Whoever can give me a reason. Default. Sorry? Because it's a, it's a default. Yes. When you, <laughs> <laughs> when you have zero, it just means, it's, in CSS, zero just means turn it off. Right? So zero just means it's off. Simple as that. Actually, I did that because I got caught with that. I thought, oh, I'm going to play with this. And I put zero in, expecting to be the whole thing. No, expecting it to be nothing, of course. And it was the whole thing. So there you go. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back to do 50 I here. I don't think that's right. What you're looking at is a dash array. Kind of a so, yeah, you're looking at zero and then everything else. So your zero is rendering as zero, but then the rest of the array is showing as... That's actually an interesting point. Yeah, it probably is too. Because you can have multiple numbers in here. And that's the point yeah. Because your implication when you had, say, 5, is that you're 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, basically. So 500 is 500, 500, and so on. But 0 is 0, and then everything else. Actually, actually, thank you for saying that. Yeah. Um, as I said, I'm not the expert. I'm still figuring out half this stuff myself. Um, in fact, when I was showing you that multiple numbers one, when I put in like 10, 50, and 30, and whatever, if you put in an, um, an odd number, it will always double it so it ends up being an even number, and then it will draw that. So what Chris said, um, just going on from that, my zero actually is zero, zero. So it's, it's anyway, like that. Go figure. <laughs> All right, so uh, what am I doing here? What happened there? I don't want font size. What's that? I know why. Okay. So I'm going to have the top one and the bottom one are identical at the moment. Now I'm going to talk about what stroke dash offset actually did. The reason I'm doing this tonight is that actually when I first started to read about this stuff, I couldn't find a good explanation of it. There were quite a lot of examples, but I didn't really follow what, the, what was really going on in the... In the um, in their ex in, in, like what they're explaining, so I thought I'd have a go myself. So stroke dash offset. Now, if I do a stroke dash offset of say ten, of ten, <laughs> um, what's going to happen is this: a stroke dash offset just moves everything like that. So what's happened is this one here is just starting 10 pixels before. This space is happening 10 pixels before. This is happening 10 before, and so on. So if I was to do uh, another number like halfway, it's just going to, it's going to um, bring this one to halfway in the gap uh, along the thing. So this stroke dash array is actually really quite a, a, a uh, useful thing for that exercise that I was doing before because it works like this. If I now make my, my green one um, uh, 500, 500. By the way, you can have commas in here or not, doesn't matter. Something that caught me out because actually I made a mistake and didn't put a comma and it worked and I thought, ooh, so you don't actually need a comma for that. Um, and I'll do this the same. So 500, 500 should be, what should 500, 500 be? 
just a straight line because it's 500 on and that's what we're going to see and then 500 off. So here it is. And now if I make my stroke dash offset 500, it's chocolate time. I've made my stroke <laughs> dash offset 500. What should happen now? Same Sorry? The same. It's actually no line. I'm not giving her a chocolate because <laughs> she's, she's running the show. Right? A stroke dash offset of 500 means that what's happening now is that my 500-500 my is actually 500 on, 500 off. So if I do a stroke dash offset of 500, it's going to move the whole thing this way. And so what I'm going to, get, what I'm going to see is the zero, uh, the zero part. So there it is. It's disappeared. Who did say that? Who'd like to claim? Who wants the chocolate? <laughs> <laughs> Here you go. Okay, send everybody away happy. Do we have enough for one for everybody? Yes. Almost. Oh, Quick, wave your hands, everybody. <laughs> As he said, you only, all you have to do is participate. You don't have to, uh, you don't have to be correct. Okay, so now to show you the magic of this thing. I, I think this is really great. If I now change my stroke dash offset from 500 to 490, I'm just moving it a little bit this way. So I'll just see a little bit. And if I make it a little bit less, say 450, I'll see even, even more of it. And so I get smaller and smaller number here. I'm going to see more and more of the, the thing until I get all the way down to zero. And what will I see? I knew that guy at the back there was dying to answer all night. So there he is. There you go. Okay. So yes, you are right. You see the whole thing. So I make use of that process for drawing my, my curve that I want to draw. I create the curve once and then do the stroke dash offset so that I don't see any of it. And then as the animation proceeds, the um, stroke dash offset number goes from the length of the curve down to zero. And so the whole thing will then appear as, as, we, uh, as we go along. So, da -da -da -da, here was the final result on the, on the live page. And there it is looking beautiful. <coughs> the radius is doing its thing. The circle is doing its thing. It's giving me a nice 60 frames per second. And it looks good on iPad. However, when I did it on iPad, I got depressed. Because it didn't give me 60 frames per second. I thought, oh, God, after all that, I still don't have 60 frames per second. Do you know why? Sorry? <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, actually, I was going to say, um, Chrome on, on iPad is faster for all of these things. But even Chrome was still giving 30. It was still, it was still not giving 60. The reason is that iPad actually throttles it back to 30 anyway to save battery. Thanks, Steve Jobs. <laughs> right? So... Um, the best I could get was still about 31 or something or other, and that's all it would, it would actually produce. But still, it's a whole lot more respectable than the two or three frames per second that I was getting before, and it's, you can see it, and it's, and it's viewable and whatever. So, just kill that. Um, there's, uh, maybe I'll just show you this quickly because I'm almost finished. Um, you've probably seen this kind of thing where this is where I got the idea to actually do this and the animation will start sometime soon. That's not it. This one here. Have you seen this sort of stuff? So this is what they're doing. Same sort of thing. Draw the whole thing, hide it all and then progressively show it. Now this actually also shows something that I, uh, like for my stuff, what I wanted to do was to do it all in CSS. Like the circle that was going around, and I wanted to do that 
because I knew I could do it completely CSS and also the radius thing going around, whatever. The trouble is I couldn't control it. It just had a mind of its own, of course, and, and this is sort of what they're facing here, is that unless you set it up properly, it will you know, keep on going forever or, or whatever. And um, of course I could get it to work, but to get it to work at the same time as my other curve and have it working exactly, uh, I just never got that to work. So I thought, all right, give up. Still do it with um, JavaScript, but it's still working all right. Okay. So um, my summary of what was going on, uh, I create and draw the complete curve once and then hide the curve using stroke dash array. Um, what you should all be thinking is how does he know how long the curve has to be? If you can answer that, I'll give you two chocolates. Sorry? That's why I'm giving you two chocolates. <laughs> Oh, I'll, I'll tell you in a minute. Sorry? Actually, um, it's, it's, no, it's not. It's not, it's because it's not the same as the length around the, the circle. Good guess. Um, I'll, I'll tell you in a minute. So progressively reveal the curve using stroke dash offset. You need to know the length of the curve at time t. And this looks scary, but it's really no big deal. It's just square root of 1 plus the cosine. All that is, is just, um, this here is just the derivative of your expression. So I'm doing sine, the derivative of that is cos, square it. So to get the length, that's the only calculation I'm doing to get that length for each one, because it needs to know how far along the curve it actually is. That was the bit that I couldn't coordinate with CSS. It didn't want to know about that. I just couldn't marry the two of them together, so it, it, it didn't work. Um, oh yeah, all right. So this is a bit of nonsense I just did for tonight. I'm not even sure that I like it. This, this thing here, it's just a bit of nonsense and I thought, okay, fine. So I thought what I'd do is I'd show you, uh, this is just another concept that is quite nice to have. Um, if I go back to my rendering thing and do the paint flashing, and do a refresh. So what's nice is the paint flashing is very small. So uh, how that thing works is a series of divs. It's about seven or eight divs or something or other, and they just move in using a, um, a Bezier curve function in CSS. This is all CSS this time. No JavaScript involved here. No library, no nothing. Just straight CSS. But it's actually kind of neat that it um, it only needs to paint the actual div that's doing anything at that time. So very, very small, which is why it's quick. And if I do one of these recordy things, uh, I don't want to do the page load, I just do it like this. I didn't do that right. Okay, like that. And of course, there's nothing to see here because there's no JavaScript actually going on at all. It's just all it's doing is painting stuff. <coughs> so all this is, is actually JavaScript that's going on when I did the page load, but all of this stuff is just moving the, uh, moving the divs around. You'll notice I did it twice and then I stopped it. There's nothing worse, there's nothing more hypnotic than animations that just go on forever. Please don't do that. There's a TV show I watch and she thinks, the woman that runs the thing thinks it's wonderful to have these animations just going on endlessly. And I did, by the end of it, I just, <laughs> I can't watch her, I can't listen to what's going on, it's just, it's just dreadful. Okay. Um, so yeah, use as small an animation as, as possible. Uh, I just go back to this last one that I did. I won't show it to you, but the paint area is actually the whole thing. Before I was happy that I could get it to paint just the part of the curve that I was showing, but sadly it's gone back to painting the whole thing and I thought, oh, I really have to start again. Uh, as I said, I like to sleep as well, so it's fast enough, I gave up. Um, now, I haven't said anything much about hardware acceleration. I haven't had a lot of success with this. If you have, then please share, I'd, I'd really like to hear. But what this actually means is 
Um, if, you can, if you can take your object and move it into a higher plane, if you like, into its own layer, and then animate it there, then the browser doesn't have to redraw everything else that's underneath it. A bit like what I just showed you. The only thing it has to redraw is the stuff that's moving. But if you've got an SVG, you, you want, if you can, you can move the thing into a higher layer. So you do that using Z-index. Well, I, you know, I was promised that this was going to work and I fiddled with it quite a bit, but I couldn't get it to make much difference in, in what was going on. It's still, the browsers, like different browsers seem to want to still paint the whole thing on every animation. And I thought, has anyone played with this? index only works if you are positioning your elements in a particular way. So if they're in the like flow of the page, then Z index basically doesn't do anything. Could be. Um, you might have more luck with the new CSS we'll transforms change. and translate it up. Yeah, that, I mean, that's what I'm talking about. That, that's what it is. I was doing transforms on that as experiments and it just didn't seem to... Have you tried the wheel change something? No. That won't invoke hardware acceleration though. That will just try the hardware acceleration. So it just preempts the browser? Yeah, basically. Because <coughs> without that, as soon as something's called, then the browser will decide whether it wants to hardware accelerate or not. When you call it, it will basically say, I really want to accelerate this bit. Not yet, but just get ready for it. Oh, okay, gotcha. I think what you just said then reminds me of the problem. It was sort of getting the browser ready for it, but it never actually did it when I wanted it to do it. That was sort of my experience. So I, anyway, I just thought I'd mention it because all the writers mention it. And if you can get it to work, let, please let me know. Um, so how to get it to work is to do like the translate Z so it moves it into another, another layer. I said, has some drawbacks. The drawback is you spend hours trying to get it to do something and it doesn't do anything. That's the drawback I found. Um, the other thing that I found very useful was to use request animation frame and not using set interval. Um, I didn't go into that before, but with set interval, uh, it will actually fire. It try, if, you, if you ask it to fire at 1 60th of a second, it will fire if it's not busy doing something else. And if it's busy doing something else, it will just stop firing. Right? Whereas request animation frame is basically every time the, the screen refreshes at 60, uh, 60 times a second, it will try to... It's still, it's still going to lag for, for the same reason, but it tends to be more uh, reliable for smoother animations, i found. Keep the paint area as small as possible, as I said. Use Chrome performance tools. Many hours I spent playing with those tools. They're all great. There's just so much information in there, it's fantastic. Um, use simple JS libraries or none at all. Uh, invoke hardware acceleration and if it works, please let me know. And use CSS as much as possible, but as I said, you can't always get it to play nicely with your JavaScript. Um, one thing I found is uh, avoiding fade in, fade out. I found that that slowed down things terribly, especially on a phone. So I don't do that anymore. Yeah especially if it was happening during a page load or something or other, things would just slow way down. So uh, I do other things to have things sort of subtly appear rather than a, a fade in, fade out. Sorry? Use an overlay. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. So as soon as you're adding an alpha channel to something that's already rendering, you're adding a lot of graphics calculation. Yes. That's busy enough as it is. Yeah. Um, and in general, animate your transforms, not like try and change your widths or your heights or those sorts of things. Transforms is usually the way to go in terms of animations. And try to get 60 frames per second. And if you can, you'll have a warm inner glow and uh, think life is wonderful. Thank you for listening. <laughs> Any questions? Chocolates. Has anyone not got a chocolate? He's, he's asking a question. <laughs> Let me deliver them so I don't destroy people's eyes in the, me in the middle. When you are describing the graph for offset, um, what I imagine that to be would be the graph moving in from, from left to right. Um, but in instead it started creating the graph from left to right. 
What is that? <laughs> Can I? Let me just go back to that. <clears throat> Um, let me go back to something like this. <coughs> now, what was going on here was both of them have got 500, 500, and 500, 500 for the stroke dash array. So it means 500 on and 500 off. Right? And by, by telling it stroke dash offset 500, you're actually moving the off portion to here. Right? Then the, the stroke dash offset says, well, offset it by 480. Instead of offsetting it by 500, offset it by 480. So you're going to have that much. So actually the off goes from there to just there. And if I made it 450, the off would be from there to there. So the on portion currently is there. You see why I struggled with this first time. I didn't get it at all first time I came across it either. So what, what is the green bit here? equivalent to this portion here or this portion here? What you're seeing there is that bit. <coughs> That's basically you've got <coughs> this entire thing shifted. Yeah. Right. So but the, the graph would have looked like this, right? Yep. So why is it that we don't see the tail end of the graph here? Ah, because I'm just starting it at zero. Ah, I, I see what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. But with my, with my various animations, I'm just starting at zero. Okay. So the curve that I draw starts from zero and goes to two pi, okay. right? And then I offset it so that it's actually just off screen there. But it still doesn't explain why it isn't just the, the tail end of it and why you see the start of it <coughs> instead. So this one, this one, this one. Um, let, me, let me do a start right there. So what's currently happening, there's the length of my curve, and I have moved it back to there. And as it goes on, it starts, it's like a piece of rope that you're pulling through, and it will appear. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, yeah, I had to do the same quite a few times. <laughs> Let me guess which browser that is. Starts with I and ends in E. Oh, no. no. No hardware acceleration there anyway. Safari? Firefox. No. Firefox. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can check it out. If you have the most recent Firefox from there, you can go to the content website of uh, my choice. <laughs> and you will see that there's something missing. And I can't for the life of me figure out why the hell it is doing the browser and not Firefox. Do we have time to look at it? Sure, why not? Do you, yeah, you want to come out? Come out and show us it, please. Is there a conference website of any particular <laughs> type? <laughs> well, okay, so if you haven't seen, there is a big JavaScript conference coming around again. <laughs> oh, and if I type it with an I, it might even work. That one. And that's a really interesting 3D animation. I actually put a matrix 3D transform in here too, so you can play around with it. So you can, like, oh, for cool. example, make this one 97 or, or control windows. Oh. And then you can use your arrow keys up and down to change the value as well, which works with m mediocre results in this one. <laughs> <laughs> These um, things never work in demos. Or here. Oh, this is, let me refresh it to, to zero. So when we do this one, can we? Ooh. Well, so you can just tap into one and use the arrow keys to change it slightly, if you like. So this is if you want to play around with Matrix 3D, you can do that. But my big problem with this is, well, this is all great in all the WebKit browsers. Is there a Firefox on here? Yeah, just go down the bottom. See, two thirds of the way along there. I'll close this in the background because sometimes it has a few performance <laughs> issues. Maybe it works on Windows, though. I've only tried this on Mac. Give it time, it's a Windows. 
<laughs> so tell us about your conference. Yeah, you? Oh, yes. Uh, yes. Camp Asia is, um, I think by now, the, actually, I think it has always been the biggest uh, web developer conference that we have in Southeast Asia. It's a three-day conference happening in January. Uh, it's all about the web platform, and this year will include also some CSS content. Because we're going to do, uh, let me actually do this properly. And she just copy paste. Have you heard about this new trend called CSS and JS? We do that <laughs> on the conference level. <laughs> so this is just for the trolls. And here you see my problem. <laughs> there is an essential part missing. It's and sometimes it flickers when the GPU then decides to do so. And I'm yet for the life of me trying to figure out why that is. I assume it has something to do with nested 3D contexts that seemingly WebKit is more comfortable with than this thing. Can you check the button? It's also really, like, the performance is really shit, and it's the same on Mac as well. But did you check the buttons? That is the, uh, like, known browser button for this? Uh, on Firefox, I have not, no. I've so far just tried to play have around moving it you, out you of context. You should check the buttons on those and then. Have okay. you considered inviting a uh, Mozilla dev to the conference and get us to fix it? Uh, yes, <laughs> uh, there will idea. be plenty of those. Uh, I made sure latest then we're going to fix it. <laughs> and here's, by the way, this is also the website I was talking about earlier that attempts the scroll thing. And uh, it works more fuckly than right and I have to redo it eventually. And the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to just make a big container in the background that makes the normal website scroll normally. And then depending on your scroll position, I'm going to move layers on top of your scrolling so that like you're still doing native scrolling and there are just layers on top that will lock in. Instead of trying to lock the scrolling, I'm just locking layers according to your scroll. That works much more reliable and that's what I can recommend. Snap points is still shit. No, it really doesn't work. I get so many complaints about this. Like people like, this is a web conference, like, then it's scroll over right and it sucks. Anyway, yeah, so if so, anybody... So if you can solve that for him tonight, three chocolates. <laughs> I'm happy to give, a, I'm happy to give, a, give a free ticket out for this. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You, you solve this on Firefox, you get a free ticket. <laughs> uh, by the way, on tickets, they are, before the end of the month, still 490 and they're going to go up to 590 from the 1st of September. $490 worth of ticket, guys. The good thing is there's going to be a 20% discount from 1st of this September. Uh, if you remember, talk CSS. No, sorry, Singapore CSS, the discount code. Singapore CSS has a discount code, right? So this is for community. You're in the know. It's 20% off. So there you go. Enjoy. Thank you. Good challenge. Okay. Um, should I talk about mine or should we just... You got time? Oh, how, okay. how long are you going to be? 